Have you ever wondered how to use a prokinetic to get rid of your gas and bloating? A prokinetic? A what? Stay tuned. We're going to talk about how to use a prokinetic and get rid of your gas and bloating. Welcome to Gut Freedom, where we find your gut problem, fix it, and you can live your best life. I'm Jason Goto, and I'm here to help you. Now, today we're going to talk about prokinetics. You're probably like, what the H-E double hockey puck is a prokinetic? A prokinetic is something that helps the food. Uh, well, is it exactly that? No. Your small intestine has actual muscles in it. How else do you think the food moves along? So what can happen over time or what we suppose happens is somehow that musculature that would make the food push along in your small intestine somehow slows down or it just doesn't work as well. And we need to find a way to stimulate that to push the food through because if it keeps backing up and slowing down, that's when people get a lot of gas, bloating, constipation, food sits too long. So I've been experimenting for a few years on what ProConnect seemed to work best that you literally can go buy at your local market, grocery store, online. And I found two that work really, really well. But first, let's talk, let's talk about what is the difference between a ProKinetic and a laxative? Because this is where many, many people get confused. When you think of laxative, what do you think of? You, uh, you know, it could be colase. Uh, that's probably that's a pretty big word unless you're in a hospital. Um, milk and magnesia. Milk and magnesia. Uh, Miralax. These things tend to make you go, right? But they tend to make you go with some water and sometimes it causes diarrhea and you just never know how well it's going to work. Um, laxatives also, you can use them as stool builders. You can also use fiber. Uh, Metamucil is an example of that. But that is not what prokinetic is. A prokinetic is not trying to bulk and a prokinetic is not trying to add water to your large intestine to get stuff out of you. What a prokinetic is, it stimulates the progression, the muscles of your small intestine to push the food along. Laxatives do not do that, okay? Laxatives push stuff through your colon, large intestine. A prokinetic pushes things through your small intestine. So, whoop, how funny, huh? A prokinetic is not a laxative. A prokinetic stimulates the muscles of your small intestine to move the food along. And that's what most of us need in order to get rid of our gas and bloating. So, what are the types of prokinetics? Okay, one that I love, I mean, I, I really love, I've been using it for, for the last two or three years. This one is called STW5 is like the technical term, but the brand name is Iberogast. So how do you actually do that? What, like, what do you do with this type of prokinetic? Well, let me describe one more. Ginger. Now, ginger, do you see the bottom here? No GERD or reflux. Why? Uh, have you ever eaten some ginger chews or had a lot of ginger and you're like, damn, I have heartburn. You don't want to use a product with a lot of ginger if you're prone to acid reflux, heartburn, GERD. Okay. So these are the two. Two prokinetics. I, uh, sorry, Iberogast and ginger. All right. So when would someone take this kind of stuff? Well, what I found with patients and myself is the best time to take a prokinetic is right before bed, because that way the food is not sitting in the small intestine, fermenting, fermenting, and fermenting and causing a lot of gas and bloating. So it stimulates the small intestine to move the food toward the large intestine so you can poop it out in the morning. That way you don't feel so bloated and full all the time. Another great time to use it is between meals. So say I had lunch and one or two hours later, I can take some ginger or I can take some Iberogast. And that will also help stimulate that food to move through the small intestine, pushing it into the colon. Then we don't feel so bloated and full and disgusting all the time. You know, it, it's an awful experience. And then, well, you could also take it before a meal. And before a meal is like 30 minutes before a meal, you can take it. It can push some of the food along. You kind of have to play with when you want to take it. No one knows exactly what's going to work for you, but here are the times you can take it. 30 minutes before a meal, ooh, the sun's out today. After between meals and before bed. 
I typically like it the best when I take it before bed. It just helps me wake up in the morning. I feel better and less gas and bloated, but it also works between meals. So let's say you have a presentation, date night, a uh, wedding, an event to go to. I would probably take this throughout the day, the gas or the ginger root, one or two hours after every meal, just to keep stuff going and keep it out the other end so it doesn't come up this end or make me look like I'm pregnant all day. But if I take that, uh, how much do I take? I mean, how much ginger or, or iberogast do I want to take? Well, the iberogast, you're taking 20 to 30 drops. Yeah, it's liquid. It's so damn easy. You put it in a bag, put it in your purse. You can take it with you. It's something very easy to do. And just to show you, I'm going to show you the bottle. All right. This is iberogast. Ooh, looks really medical. And here's the box that comes in. Yay. Now, don't forget, uh, you have to read labels. There's warnings and things like that. So please, please, please read this stuff on these labels. Okay. We don't want anything bad to happen to you. I haven't really heard of anything bad happening, but you got to read the labels because that's where they're there, right? All right. So 20 or 30 drops, right? How many? Let's see. 20 or 30 drops. So I had a banana for breakfast. That was probably 45 minutes to an hour ago. I mean, obviously, that's probably not going to cause me lots of gas and bloating, but this is just an example, okay? So shot glass. No, no, I don't drink a lot, but got to have shot glass, right? Parties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty. Okay, yeah, it's somewhere around there. Okay. Ah, uh, para arriba, para abajo, para centro, para dentro. Not bad. See, I'm not even choking. I'm not gagging. It actually tastes kind of good. It reminds me of the tea from Aveda that you can get for free sometimes when you walk in. Okay, side note, side note. Um, so ginger, how much do we dose in that? 500 to 1,000 milligrams. Where do you get this? Read the labels. I'm actually going to put a bunch of links where you can get all these things, products with ginger in it. Um, where can you get gas? And you can also get them at discounts, thank God. So I'm going to put them below, but in the uh, comment section, no, the detail section below the video. But we still have a little bit more to talk about. Now, what if you're constipated? You probably need to take a prokinetic plus a laxative. It's not going to work too well if you're constipated. I mean, you've got a bunch of poo in the large intestine. You got a bunch of this in the large intestine. Uh, you got to kind of keep moving it along. I mean, it's a small intestine pushing some food here. Here it comes, here it comes. And it's like, okay, I can't go anymore because there's a bunch of poo here. We've got to get this out. So you, need, if you're a constipated person, it's best to still take your laxative and take the prokinetic both together. All right. That way it moves it along the chain and you feel better. All right, everyone. That's it for today. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.